It's The Real News. I'm Aaron Maté. Israel says it will cut the already meager power supply to the Gaza Strip. Gaza's two million residents already receive just four hours of electricity a day. But Israel's move would reduce that by an additional 45 minutes. The Israeli security cabinet approved it after the Palestinian Authority told Israel it will only cover 70 percent of the cost. The Palestinian Authority also wants Hamas to make political concessions. Aid groups warn that cutting Gaza's power even more will intensify its dire humanitarian conditions and possibly spark an armed response. Joining me to discuss is Real News correspondent Shir Hever. Welcome, Shir. Thanks for having me, Aaron. I want to start by playing uh, for you the explanation given by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who said Israel has no stake in this and it's merely acting based on the request of the Palestinian Authority over what he called an internal Palestinian dispute. In the last day, I heard several false explanations on the issue of electricity in Gaza. It's important to understand that the matter of Gaza's electricity is a disputed issue between the Palestinian Authority and Hamas. Hamas is demanding the Palestinian Authority finance the electricity, and the Palestinian Authority refuses to pay. This issue is an internal Palestinian argument. In any case, I wish to make clear, Israel has no interest in any escalation. So, Shir, that's Netanyahu saying that this is an internal Palestinian matter and Israel has no interest in escalation. Um, what's your take on that? Uh, well, he's lying, of course. Uh, Israel uh, is controlling Gaza in many different ways. In fact, the Israeli organization Gisha has just uh, published uh, a new website with which they call 50 Shades of Control, where they explain the 50 ways by which the Israeli government still occupies and, and controls every aspect of Gaza. Um, Netanyahu is trying to uh, shift the blame on Abbas. And it's true that uh, President Mahmoud Abbas or the Palestinian government is now trying to um, put pressure on, on Hamas, or at least create the appearance that he's putting a lot of pressure on Hamas uh, in preparation for negotiation with Israel, because um, uh, President Trump is saying that there's going to be negotiations soon, and, and uh, the Palestinians uh, are concerned that they're going to be asked to make uh, very painful concessions. Uh, and I think also the Israelis are, are concerned about these concessions. So. Uh, suddenly Netanyahu is uh, um, uh, pretending as if he's obliging the request of the Palestinian Authority uh, by cutting the, the power, but uh, there is a responsibility uh, of the Israeli government to the well-being of Palestinians in Gaza. Uh, and this responsibility remains, and everybody in the area, whether in Israel or in the Palestinian territory, understands completely that this is an Israeli decision to cut power and to uh, intensify the siege. Uh, and in fact, the Israeli military, as well as the Israeli uh, intelligence organizations are actually calling on the government not to do this because uh, it uh, strongly increases the chance for another confrontation. So explain a bit further what would motivate Abbas to basically use Gaza as a bargaining chip uh, here uh, ahead of negotiations with Israel. Abbas is running out of bargaining chips. Uh, in a way, uh, uh, this this is a, the last moment uh, for Palestinians to try to get an independent state in a way, uh, because the Israeli government is now moving in the direction of um, annexing the, the West Bank or large parts of the West Bank. And uh, Netanyahu has just said uh, to the United Nations and to the United States, that actually has a new plan uh, by which the Israeli illegal colonies in the West Bank would uh, remain under Israeli sovereign control, even if a Palestinian state would be erected. And those colonies would, of course, need to have their own roads and infrastructure also under Israeli control. Netanyahu added that uh, military control over the entire West Bank will remain uh, uh, with, with Israel and not with the Palestinians. That means that Palestinian statehood is in name only. So Abbas is, is pretty much cornered right now. Uh, he uh, showered President Trump with, with praise, trying uh, to, to appeal to, uh, to Trump's sense of, of uh, worth as a great negotiator uh, in an attempt to, to improve his negotiating position. But when it comes to actually um, 
uh, having cards to negotiate with. He doesn't have many. Uh, and putting pressure on Hamas in Gaza uh, is one of the only things he can do. And if Israel will indeed be dragged into another uh, confrontation with Gaza, that, uh, or, or more likely Israel will initiate another invasion of Gaza this summer, uh, killing a lot of people and causing a lot of damage, uh, then uh, this will uh, affect Israel's standing in the world and maybe um, give a little bit more of international support to the Palestinians, but at a terrible cost. So in order to show uh, the, uh, the U.S. and Israel that uh, he means business, he's, Abbas is willing to basically uh, deepen Gaza's suffering? Um, I believe so, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, the Hamas party is now being isolated also because of the siege, uh, the diplomatic siege and the economic siege on Qatar. Qatar is uh, one of Hamas's supporters and losing support from Qatar puts Hamas in a very precarious situation. I think that makes it easier for uh, Mahmoud Abbas to push forward. And in fact, he, he also made statements, uh, not, not he himself, but senior members of his party uh, recently made statements that they completely support uh, the six country uh, countries which are now um, uh, implementing the siege against Qatar. Uh, and they say that uh, uh, Qatar is no place in Middle East politics and Hamas has no place in Middle East politics. You know, I just want to make one distinction, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you said that this is Palestinians' last chance to get an independent state. But is this Palestinians' last chance, or is this basically Abbas's last chance? Because, of course, Palestinians uh, are entitled, most of the world thinks, to an independent state. Israel has no legal claim to any of the occupied territories. so. Is it more that Abbas is simply trying to scramble for what he can get until his time in office is over? Well, I, first of all, I, I completely agree with you that uh, the Palestinians have a right uh, to an independent state and the right is not going to die. Uh, the right is not going anywhere. Uh, but the question is, what is the preferred strategy of the Palestinians uh, in order to achieve their freedom and their, and their uh, independence? And uh, Abbas represents a, a powerful camp within the Palestinian political sphere that calls for the two-state solution, an independent Palestinian state. Uh, but members of his own party uh, are already doubting that strategy very seriously. And, and I, I think Abbas, uh, like you said, this is for him a kind of last chance. If he uh, fails in this round of negotiations, and if the Palestinian Authority is not successful in achieving any kind of gains for the people, uh, then uh, the, the Palestinian Authority itself and member, uh, senior members of the Fatah Party and the PLO, uh, and not only Hamas, but also these other, uh, these more uh, parties that are, that are strongly supporting the two-state solution, are, are actually saying quite openly, we're ready to, to change our policy and to demand equal civil rights under one joint government. And if that happens, then uh, it doesn't mean, of course, that the Palestinians will stop struggling for their freedom, but it means that they will struggle for their freedom within a different framework. So, Shir, let's go to another area where the Israeli government is putting pressure on Palestinian society. Uh, the Israeli government has approved a bill that would go before the Israeli parliament that would essentially stop the Palestinian Authority from paying the families of Palestinians uh, who've been killed by Israeli forces. And Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was recently testifying before Congress on this, and this is what he said. When uh, President Abbas made his visit with his delegation to Washington, the President raised it, but then I had a bilateral, much more detailed bilateral with him later that day, and I told him, you absolutely must stop making payments to family members of, quote, martyrs. I said, it's one thing to help orphans and and children, but when you designate the payment for that act, that has to stop. They have changed their policy, at least I have been informed they've changed that policy, and they are, their intent is to cease the payments uh, to the family members of those who've committed murder or violence against others. Uh, so it is, we've been very clear with them that this is simply not acceptable uh, to us, it is certainly not acceptable to the American people. So, Shir, talk about what's going on here, because the Palestinian Authority says that it will continue payments to at least the families of prisoners. Hasn't said much yet about the, the issue of payments to so-called martyrs. 
bill has not passed parliament yet. The Israeli parliament, the Knesset, did not vote on this yet, but the government approved it for vote. So that this is the first stage. And if the government supports it, then the coalition has to support it. So it has a very good chance of proceeding. But uh, um, one wonders why do they even need a bill? Because uh, this is uh, actually a system that Israel already controls the money. We're talking about tax money, which is levied uh, from Palestinians, uh, things like value-added tax, uh, income tax, which is taken from Palestinian workers, but it is collected by the Israeli government. And the Israeli government is obligated to transfer that money to the Palestinian uh, bank uh, account every month. And they don't always do that. Uh, and they can decide to collect whatever the debts or commissions or fees that they see fit every, every month. And uh, they do that, actually. Uh, for, so, for example, if we talk about electricity, we just discussed the, the crisis uh, of electricity uh, in Gaza, then it's already the case that when uh, the Israeli electricity company provides electricity to Palestinians, the Israeli government can just collect the fees directly from those tax money without giving the Palestinians any chance to negotiate well, how much should be charged and whether that may be with too much this month or, or so, uh, and so on. So when we're talking about now these payments to families, of uh, so-called martyrs, uh, meaning that uh, Palestinians who died uh, in the course of, of political resistance to the Israeli occupation, whether they were uh, terrorists or whether they were just demonstrators in Palestine, uh, uh, these are known as martyrs. And that's exactly the problem. The Israeli government simply uh, uh, considers any kind of payment to, to, the, fami uh, to the bereaved family um, a, a support of terrorism. But in reality, there are tens of thousands of families of victims of Israeli violence who are de dependent on that money to survive, uh, to, to sustain themselves. And the Palestinian government uh, is supporting these families regard without making a kind of um, judgment of, of whether uh, these people were uh, killed in the course of committing a crime or killed uh, while while innocently uh, being bystanders of Israel and, and victims of Israeli violence. Uh, now, Secretary Tillerson is simply taking the Israeli approach 100%, saying, well, uh, uh, any kind of... Uh, w when Israel is saying that somebody is a terrorist, then that certainly makes him a terrorist. Uh, and I think that's uh, uh, something that, of course, the Palestinian Authority cannot, uh, cannot accept. Uh, so that money... Uh, that Israel now wants to, that the Israeli government wants to deduct from those tax payments to the Palestinian Authority will uh, create a, a very serious crisis. Uh, if, if this is indeed, indeed passes in the Israeli parliament, uh, it could uh, lead to the collapse of the Palestinian uh, government altogether, or it could lead to a humanitarian catastrophe when tens of thousands of families will lose their uh, monthly income. So finally, Shir, uh, looking at these two developments uh, of Israel putting pressure on Palestinians, um, cutting off power to Gaza, uh, and also seeking to reduce the payments to Palestinian families that so many people rely on, what do you think is the goal here? Um, recalling that in 2014, when Israel put pressure on Palestinian society uh, by um, launching these raids in the West Bank, um, and also carrying out strikes in the Gaza Strip. That led to the devastating summer conflict in Gaza that killed so many people and also thwarted attempts at Palestinian unity. I think what connects these two stories, uh, on the one hand, um, the, the, uh, stopping the electricity to Gaza and on the other, uh, stopping money to the families of, of victims of Israeli violence and, and prisoners uh, in Israeli jails, the, the thing that connects the two stories is the issue of hypocrisy. Because Netanyahu is saying, well, we're just uh, not in going to intervene in a Palestinian internal decision whether they should uh, spend their money on this group or the other when it comes to sending electricity to Gaza. He's pretending as if this is an internal Palestinian decision. But when it comes to the internal Palestinian decision, whether they want to support the families of, of victims and prisoners, suddenly uh, Netanyahu is definitely becoming involved in their internal decision. And he's going to deduct from their budget the very exact amount that they're going to give to those families. So why is the Israeli government using so much hypocrisy? They're using hypocrisy because they're trying to change the narrative uh, to portray Palestinians as terrorists, 
to get Tillerson to repeat that statement and to uh, get Tillerson to represent their position. And, uh, and this kind of hypocrisy, when you accept it, then you've actually already accepted the fact that uh, Israel is generous towards the Palestinians and the Palestinians are, are all uh, criminals. And that's uh, uh, the goal. But, but uh, what I think the Israeli government does not want is another round of fighting. Uh, because this kind of fighting has a, a very serious imp uh, uh, implications on the Israeli economy, of course, worse implications on the Palestinian economy. Uh, and and uh, in this uh, invasion of Gaza of 2014 that you mentioned, uh, which was preceded by an invasion of the West Bank as well, uh, over 2,000 Palestinians were killed. Uh, but uh, for the Israeli side, where 72 Israelis were killed, and also uh, a very se severe damage was uh, conducted it was inflicted on the Israeli tourism industry. Uh, this is something that the Israeli government does not want to repeat. But back in 2014, the issue was Palestinians were just about to hold an election, something that the Israeli government was very concerned about. And the election was supposed to enable a reconciliation between Fatah and Hamas, a united front of Palestinians calling for their freedom against Israel. The Israeli government could just not cope with that. They could not afford to, to have that happen. So they invaded and they caused all this destruction. And now I think this is, a, a, again, the concern. What happens if the Palestinians speak with a clear voice and uh, demand uh, basic rights that, according to international law, and this attempt to create a crisis and prevent it uh, is, is exactly what the Israeli government in doing, is doing, even if it would mean another round of violence and many people killed. Real News correspondent, Sheer Haver. Sheer, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us on The Real News.